Hello YouTube. I'd like to present an argument inspired by David Hume. It's basically exactly his argument that I'm copying. It's against the existence of cause and effect. First of all, a little background on David Hume. Very famous philosopher, he was an empiricist, which means he believed that all knowledge comes from the senses. Now at first you may think, well of course, where else would it come from? Well, many people think that mathematical knowledge doesn't come from come from our senses. It's some sort of innate ability, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Uh, how did we learn that? Well, it's not from counting objects. It's just, it, it's this ability that we have. It's, um, okay, the debate was between the empiricists and the rationalists. The rationalists said that we have uh, just, we're just equipped with certain abilities. That we have innate ideas. Um, but uh, empiricists say, say no, it's not like that. We, uh, like I said, all knowledge comes from the senses. That's what Hume believed. So let's look at cause and effect. Suppose you're looking at a pool table and you see billiard ball A and billiard ball B. And let's say that you see ball A run into ball B. Now. Um, let's say, let's say, let's say I ask you, what did you just see? And you may say, well, I saw ball A run into ball B. Um, and furthermore, I saw ball A cause ball B to move. And here's where Hume says, wait, wait, what, what was that about causation? You didn't see a cause. You saw ball A move. And then immediately afterward, you saw ball B move. But you said you you saw causation, or you, you're inferring that there exists this extra thing called causation, you're totally unjustified in believing there exists such a thing because it did not occur within your experience. You never experience cause and effect. So, uh, let's see, there's one debate on YouTube between Gary, who is a burn victim 77, and Randy, um, Randy something, I forget his uh, complete username, but uh, but there is, Randy was saying that you can believe um, that there are regularities in nature without believing in cause and effect, and Gary was saying, well, hang on a second, you know, if you, if you drop a ball um, and it falls every time, I mean, you're only going to believe that that happens every time because there's some sort of causal relationship there. And, I mean, for the record, uh, I almost always agree with what Gary says, and I know he debates a lot of stuff with, uh, with Randy and some other people. Um, but in this situation, I'm going to have to side with, uh, with Randy and say just what David Hume said, which is, look, there are regularities in nature. What is this here? When we say that we see something cause something else, when we um, when we believe that we experience causation, here's what's really going on, according to Hume. Number one, there's a some sort of regularity in nature. So you know, it's light outside and then it's dark outside, and it's light then it's dark. So that's some sort of regularity. Right? And Hume would say, okay. Um, so that was part one. There's a regularity in nature. And the second part of causation, or the second thing that's going on when we say that we uh, experience causation, is um, just Hume says that we just sort of get into a habit of, uh, of assuming. Uh, there, there's this element of expectation. It gets light, then it gets dark, light, then dark. And then after a while, we just then believe, okay, after it's light for a while, we just expect that it'll be dark, and then light again, and so on, and so forth. But Hume doesn't, Hume says there's nothing go on, going on with, um, with our everyday notion of causation. Hume would say that you're positing this metaphysical, uh, completely mysterious thing called causation if you think that it's something above and beyond what you experience. And as I've said, uh, we don't experience cause and effect, at least according to Hume, I agree. Uh, but uh, according to Hume, we don't experience cause and effect itself. We just, we, we, just see, we just see something occur, 
and we see it occur enough times that we begin to expect the same result every time. Now to put this back in the context of the debate between Gary and Randy, one could say, if one were a human about uh, causation, uh, that you could just say, Gary, when I drop a ball a million times, and it does the same thing every time, um, sure, I come to expect the same result, but what is this mysterious causation that you speak of that I'm supposed to be believing in? I don't believe in that at all. Now, that's what one could say. Now, um, whether or not, I mean, it certainly seems like uh, that we believe that when we, when we experience regularities in nature, we do come to expect a, a causal relationship. Uh, and I mean causal in the everyday notion, not the Humean notion. But anyway, it is possible to argue as Hume did and just believe in constant conjunction rather than our everyday notion of causation. What I've said here is within the context of a debate between Gary and Randy, as I mentioned before, but they were talking about free will. Now, just to be absolutely clear, nothing I've said here uh, even hints at the idea that we have free will. Even if you do away with, uh, uh, with, the, with our everyday notion of causation, I mean, the, I'm just replacing that notion with the notion that uh, there are these regularities. Um, so, I mean, that this regularity would still apply to, you know, how, uh, how our brains work. Um, the thing that, uh, that someone needs to show if they'd like to argue that we have free will as I believe Randy is trying to do, they need to show that basically uh, that there's some part of our brain that does not behave according to the laws of physics. According to the laws of physics, everything is either deterministic or maybe, that, okay, there, there's a possibility that uh, quantum mechanics leaves open that there might be random events. There might be non-deterministic events, but still, that it's not like you have control over random events, right? I mean, they're random, um, so if you want to show, so Randy, if you would like to show that we have free will, please point me to the part of your brain that does not act within the laws of physics. What is this thing that is freely making choices? I'm going to go ahead and assume, Randy, that whatever part of your brain that you point to, it's going to be some physical part of your brain, okay? Now, if, if something is physical, then it behaves according to the laws of physics. So how is this thing able to choose? You might want to call something a choice, um, but it seems like um, the atoms of which you are composed just did what they always do. They uh, behaved according to the laws of physics, now, on a macroscopic scale, you might say, hey, there's some guy who just made a choice. Um, where on the micro scale or the nano scale, you just see atoms behaving again according to the laws of physics. So, where, where is this free will? It seems that we have no reason to believe that we have free will. Everything points toward uh, the direction of determinism. How could we possibly have free will if determinism is true? Okay, that's that's not what you're trying to argue. But again, you'd have to you'd have to vindicate one particular interpretation of quantum mechanics. There's never been any experiment ever performed that has shown that your favorite interpretation, the Copenhagen interpretation, which I've argued against in previous videos, um, there's there's no way there's no evidence that. The theory that you're depending upon to try to show we have free will because of this non-determinism within quantum mechanics, there's no way you're going to be able to show that uh, that, that interpretation of quantum is correct. So, good luck showing we have free will. Good luck showing that that there's some part of our brain that doesn't behave according to the laws of physics.